Hey guys, we're gonna talk about this machine right here. This is a IBM T forty two. Hey guys and welcome! Today we're gonna discuss this machine right here, it's IBM T42, one of the last IBM machines. Afterwards it was replaced by Lenovo brand and it became quite different, I would say, it's quite different. I actually like this machine a lot, I, I didn't expect it that it's gonna be like one of my favorite machines I have seen so far, but this one is quite nice even by modern standards. So today we're gonna discuss what exactly should you do, how you need to set up your system so it works nicely for you let's go and check it out so here it is famous IBM T42 laptop and let's take a look at the ports first of all on the back side we have the LPT port over here as well as power cord which is I mean power cord is cool because those days many laptops are powered just by USB-C or whatever and then we have the COM port wait no VJ port pardon me VJ port over here on the back side we have also the dock station port which is exactly what I have here here's a dock station you can dock this laptop which is cool then what's next we have the PC 2 port you can plug the mouse or the keyboard here and then we have microphone we have separate outputs for microphone and headphones which is nice I mean those days in many cases like for example the MacBook we have just like in one single port then what do we have the battery you can just change the battery if you want this battery is shot I'm gonna replace it and the cost for the battery is like 12 bucks or something so it's really cheap what else interesting thing here for example you can actually remove this DVD ROM drive from here so you can just release this hatch then you pull this one all right here's a CD DVD drive CDRV DVD and it says IBM over here I'm going to replace this one with the hard drive I'm just gonna uh, install the hard drive instead of this one so it's quite easy let's put it back boom it's done I mean it was so easy to modify the laptop back in those days I actually like it and let's open this one what I like about this laptop is that there is no uh, backlight for the keyboard keys but it's integrated right here so it's like some little flashlight over here that actually allows you to work at night it's funny solution but there is no webcam which is also good for privacy reasons if you don't have a webcam it's also nice I mean it's hard to find a laptop without webcam those days so it's based on Intel Centrina as I said it's something around 2004 it's designed for Windows XP but this laptop top is known to be able to load Windows 98 so it was one of the last laptops to be actually able to load Windows 98 how, how cool is that guys all right so, and here we have indicators sleep indicator and battery indicator uh, as I said the battery is shut on this one so I'm gonna wait till my battery arrives and what else oh here's the extension port a memory you can extend more memory here the maximum supported uh, memory size for this laptop is uh, 2GB so I'm gonna plug more memory here right now it has 512 me uh, megabytes of RAM so and yeah I definitely need, need to extend it all right let's power it on and see what we have here So I thought about installing different operating system. Initially I thought about installing just Linux over here, but then I realized that well actually I might want to use Windows as well. So I basically installed Windows and uh, Linux here. Uh, and let's boot into Windows first. Well, of course, the first operating system that came to my mind was Windows XP and it's actually the one that was shipped with this laptop. So I decided why not try the good old Windows XP, you know, because XP is, I mean, it's a great operating system. I prefer Windows 2000 for many reasons because it's like more lightweight than XP, but I mean, XP is still great compared to modern, <laughs> too many modern operating systems, honestly. Let's not start this debate which OS is better, but I installed the Windows XP here and the first thing I did here I just disabled the Windows themes so it actually has this old Windows classic theme over there so it's like nothing complicated here so XP fits the bill I think the XP is what it should work fine with and like I have no problems working with it but unfortunately since we have not that much RAM here let me open the performance tab here 
and since Windows XP doesn't have much RAM, so it was hard to actually use this one for web browsing, for example. I've installed which browser? St installed the web browser which is called MyPal. This web browser is based on Pale Moon, which is like a fork of Firefox browser back in those days. The idea was that Firefox be be became a multi-threaded browser like Chrome, for example, uh, but for those old machines, the multi-threaded browser is not good. So for those old machines, you see it still took like how many like 20 seconds to load this browser even in this case but um, for those machines the single threaded web browsers is the best for example if we load any website let's say apple.com how long is it gonna take to load apple.com and it takes I don't know. Well, it's not that bad actually, because this browser is single threaded, as I said. In this case, it doesn't have, it doesn't use so much resources as like Chrome, for example. It tries to minimize the resource usage. So for those machines, you should consider installing browsers like that, like MyPal, for example. And to be honest, there is not much choice. So if you want modern browser with the, all the security features built in, there's not much options. Yeah, otherwise you need to use the Internet Explorer 8, I think. The second problem was to install drivers actually. Finding drivers uh, for this uh, kind of laptop is kind of hard. You need to browse through the whole the Lenovo website and seek for those drivers and it's kind of hard. So for, for that reason I've decided to use the utility which is called Snappy Driver and some few a uh, few guys just build this utility to actually that looks around which hardware you have and it just like accordingly it set up your machine it downloads the drivers indexes those drivers somehow it like updates the drivers if those are outdated and that's actually a nice utility so you can just like use snappy driver will be down in the description the link for this utility so this is the first thing a second thing is the service pack and the latest official service pack for windows xp is service pack 3 and actually if you go and type winver it's gonna display this service pack yeah it's gonna just display service pack 3 service pack 3 was released when it was like 2009 outdated by itself the only way to get those latest updates and latest updates i mean the updates which you get through the registry hack either change your registry to to update the latest updates or actually use the service pack built by some other users and they have created the service pack 4 or something so I downloaded the service pack 4 and install it so I've got the most secure Windows XP possible by just installing this service unofficial service pack 4 so yeah this is Windows XP it, it actually works fine I mean I don't see much delay of course I plan to install uh, Windows XP on the SSD drive now I'm just gonna clone it from this internal hard drive and use it on SSD but I mean it's usable it's possible to use it and it's not not a big deal not a problem actually let's take a look at the properties you can see the specs here so it's Intel Pentium M processor 1.7 gigahertz and 512 megabytes of RAM I actually said that I've installed all the updates but as you can see it still keeps downloading some updates it's always the story of Windows you think that you updated everything but it still takes time to update it how long it exp since XP was released 19 years yeah 19 years of updates right can you imagine this is I think the best OS for this machine either this one or I'm gonna show you the Linux even Linux not all the versions gonna run only the versions which are specifically compiled for this old hardware for example the anti-x i'm gonna show you the anti-x version here or oh, like xubuntu also runs fine here you need to remember that this is not a 64 machine it's a 32 bit machine which allows only 2 gb of ram that's it one nice thing about this one is this ibm thinkpad how it's called the tracker i mean it's not called the mouse i forgot the pointer and those Two buttons over here so basically many users are fans of this kind of solution those buttons here so it's duplicated I mean some users seem to like it all right now we're gonna boot into Linux it's actually interesting I thought that Linux is gonna be immediately a better solution I thought that Linux is gonna be just like like that it works perfect here and all that but you know honestly I feel like XP is a better fit for this machine 
so i think in terms of speed in terms of like how i feel like using this device under linux it felt to me that windows xp is a better solution it just like felt like this because browser loading speed was better there are more applications for windows right even for windows xp which is out there there are more applications for that uh, and then games in terms of games you can run so many games on this machine in windows and you cannot do this in linux right so i thought that windows xp is actually better but you should decide for yourself which you think is better so it's not that it's much uh, faster i mean the windows xp it's just i don't know the overall experience I, I felt like windows was better for this particular machine i use the anti-x linux distro you might try using different distros maybe it works better in this case so in terms of applications we have dustbox emulator here which is cool we have all the utilities for the office i mean LibreOffice installed here um programming we have guinea i actually have the anti-x review on my uh, other videos so you can can go check it out in terms of other things terminal of course Midnight Commander is my favorite and just take a look how nice it looks in this display, right? It's just like for coding, for working with files, it's just like this display is really the best and the quality of the display, I mean the DPI and stuff like that, it still feels like fine, I mean I don't see any problems with that. So for example, for working with the command line, for working with the documents, I actually like typing here in this LibreOffice application and I mean with the display it works nicely, I mean easy if you want to go back to the terminal command line you just press ctrl alt f1 and you are back into the terminal and you just need to type your credentials and here we are on the command line so we can do all the stuff we can run htop for example which says this is the how much a memory we consume in 138 max out of 494 but i think in this case it's actually still running the x window system over here so i mean it makes sense that it consumes that much and then again midnight commander all runs pretty nicely you can read books from this computer you can do all the stuff you want i mean for all the basic stuff this is great machine i actually like really like it and it just like has very nice feel of this common line and all the stuff you can develop your like python applications small scripts here i mean the build quality is actually quite nice yeah guys this is it this is the ibm t42 and i'm gonna install more memory here i'm gonna install ssd drive over here and see how it works for me if you also like it you can purchase it off ebay for 30 bucks or something it's not a big deal and by the way few few words about activation of windows you cannot activate windows xp online those days the only way to activate windows xp right now is to call the specific number you can only call and like manually do the whole process of activation so this is how it works so just keep it in mind if you like this video please press the like button subscribe and see you later in new videos there'll be a bunch of more interesting stuff thank you it seems to me i spoke too soon about replacing the dvd drive with the hard drive adapter the problem here is that i forgot about something can you guess what here's the port for the dvd drive and i thought it's gonna be the same like this one i thought it's gonna be well it's gonna be sata i forgot this detail because back in those days i think it's like ide port or something so it's a different port it doesn't match so i need to think about something i mean it fits fine but the port is different as you can see i'm gonna try something or maybe i'm gonna buy a different adapter and use this one elsewhere so